when the country went into lockdown, you used a press pass and you went and spoke to some of the migrants, the hundreds of thousands of people uh, who were forced to flee Delhi once all transportation had already been shut down. You spoke to some of these migrants uh, in Delhi. Can you tell us what they said about their situation? Well, as soon as the the lockdown was announced, mass transport was stopped. It was as you, uh, it was the uh, you know the last week of March. People had not been paid their salaries. People who who live virtually from day to day, uh, the landlords in these little cramped medieval tenements into which you know five and ten people are squashed into a room, said that they wanted their rent on time. So people just had to leave, and they and it was a it was a surreal sight, you know, while there was no traffic on the streets, but suddenly, you know, the 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 the, the structural inequality and the, the the horror, the shame of how our societies live made themselves manifest, you know. And I just realized that these people have started walking, walking for hundreds of kilometers to their villages. And I went out because I, I, I felt like the tech tectonic plates were shifting, you know, it was crazy. So I went to the border between Delhi and uh, Uttar Pradesh, where I was, I walked with uh, with many of them. And I spoke to many of them, uh, including Muslims who had just survived this horrific kind of wannabe pro program against them, which didn't turn out that way because people were so prepared that they fought back. But having survived that, now they were walking these hundreds of miles home, all, uh, you know, carpenters, tailors, construction workers. And all of them were aware of the virus. All of them were wearing masks. They were doing their best to maintain social distance, it was impossible. There was a rumor that buses might be organized and suddenly like 100,000 people were there together, pressed together, waiting for buses. And I, I, I asked uh, some of them, so, you know, what, what, what do you think of this virus? They said, whatever we think of the virus right now, we have no food, we have no water, we have nowhere to sleep, we have to reach home. And uh, that was so much more present for them than this. A lot of them felt that, you know, this was a rich people's illness brought in by planes. Why didn't, why didn't they stop people at the airport instead of kicking us out of our jobs and our homes, you know? And a lot of people just, one, one of the people who I wrote about in uh, the Financial Times piece said, he just said to me, Shayad, uh, Modi ji ko hamare baare mein pata nahi, meaning maybe Modi doesn't know about us, you know, which was just perhaps true in a way that the, the government, uh, you know, and everybody else who controls anything in this society has more or less airbrushed the poor out of their imagination, out of films, out of literature, out of everything, you know, except uh, NGO brochures, where the poor uh, feature in order to raise money.